Okay, well thank you so much for all the arrangements for us, us being able to be here. And you know, I teach this in our, our assembly, if you will. Uh, first place is second place when you're in the wrong place. And second place is first place when you're in the right place. I'm in second place, but I'm in the right place. And so I'm, I'm honored here, and I know you've been meeting throughout the week, so we don't want to hold you uh, too long. And uh, we're just glad to be here. I'm glad to be among the young people on tonight. And I must admit, I, I will say this. Uh, my wife told me, she said, now you're going to be ministering for the young people. So don't go up there like you're an old man.
of a desire to fulfill the thing that you have so designed. In the book of Nehemiah, and I'm going to get there myself sooner or later, I want you to turn first to chapter number two. I'm going to do a considerable amount of reading, but don't allow, let that uh, assert you. And it's certainly not an indication of the longevity of the message, but there are some things that I want to point out that I trust will be helpful for our understanding on tonight. You may remain seated, serving honor of the Jerry Warren, pastor of this assembly. Yeah, 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 you do, because you, you speak. 
Thank you. Now, turn to the book of First Thessalonians in the New Testament. Because the theme is calling for rebuilding the walls of unity through love. Now, it's one thing to want a thing, to want a thing, but it's another thing to know how to actualize what it is that you want. That's right. So, so, so my emphasis tonight, this afternoon, is how do we actualize this unity through love that we can rebuild the walls that we are desiring in the first place. Hmm. With that being said, I want you to look in. Uh, we're going to cover a good portion of this chapter, but for topical purposes that we've already mentioned, I want you to notice chapter 5, verse 6. Good. Okay. Good. All right. good. And verse 6 says this, Thank Therefore, you so much. let okay. us, there Pick it is again, like somebody like say, let us. Pick uh, up yeah, yeah. Let us not speak as all. do others, but yeah. there it is again. Like let us, let yeah. us like one, watch like and be sober. Mm. And then in verse number eight, it says, "But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation." And there's that phrase again that keeps popping up three times here. We will actually um, four things. But anyway, let us. So our, our, our emphasis tonight is from let us to we will. From let us, in other words, let's do this, to we will. Because you did read there, and they've already probably talked about it, that... Uh, they had a mind to work. Let's look first at, at, at the, the theme itself. Because when we talk about rebuilding, that's interesting, if you will, because rebuilding is to say that something at one point was already there, already established, already set. So to rebuild is to reestablish something that at one point was already there. What are we rebuilding? We're rebuilding the walls. Now in the case of Nehemiah, of course, it was the walls around Jerusalem that had been torn down and the people of Israel, of course, were in bondage and in, were in captivity. Now there is permission given to Nehemiah by the king to go back and rebuild walls that once stood, but now have been torn down. Why are the walls there? might ask, walls around the city is to provide protection, right. provide safety, provide security to the inhabitants of the city. If there is an invader, invader it will keep them out or at least keep them at bay long enough that some alternative plans can be taken by those within that city. Notice what kind of walls that you are wanting in the Arkansas State Council. It is the walls of unity. And the last time I took a spell check on the word unity, it was spelled U-N-I-T-Y. And I noticed every time I spell that word, 
Unity cannot start without you. Every time I spell that word, I is always in the middle of unity. U N I T Y. So may I suggest that unity is you and I together. So unity starts with you and I am in the middle and as we put this together there is an unstoppable potential because we can do it better together. Now the only way it's going to be pulled off according to your theme is through love. Through, that's the conduit. So this is how we make this transverse. This is how we rebuild these walls. Well, this is not just any kind of love. It's not Euro's love, which is romantic, because if we depended on romantic love, you don't always feel in a romantic mood. If it was based upon storage love as a friend, sometimes your friends are not available. Or phileo love, we don't always have our brothers and our sisters around. But this is an agape kind of love. All right. It's a love that is sacrificial. It's a love that, that is benevolent in nature. It's a love that's focus is not on oneself, but it's focused on the object of its love. So this kind of love is always for the benefit of another. Now we have something to work with. Why is this important? Now I don't want to make you mad. I don't want to anger you. But one of the things that I've come to know in the few years I've been on this terra firma called the earth, and the few years that I have been a part of the body of Christ, and a part of Christian fellowship, and one of the things that I have discovered, and you may or may not agree with me, but that's okay. But what I have discovered is that the number one problem of Christians everywhere whether they're in Arkansas, whether they're in Texas, uh, whether they're in California, whether they're in Maine, it does not matter. The number one problem of Christians everywhere is the problem of getting along with each other. Make it plain. Uh, I just want that to soak in just a little bit. It's, 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 that, that's the number one problem. The number one problem for born again believers, baptized believers, spirit filled believers, and tongue talking believers, Holy Ghost believers, sanctified. Believers. I'm trying to help somebody now. Young believers, older believers, married believers, single believers, believers with children, believers without children, believers. Believers, uh oh, in the pulpit, believers in the pew. Believers in the boardroom. Believers in the classroom. The number one problem of Christians everywhere is the problem of getting along with each other. Young folks getting along with older people, older people getting along with younger people, younger people getting along with children, and children getting along with, oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. 
See, every believer, regardless of who it might be, regardless of how long you have been saved or born again, every believer has enough of the flesh in them to divide and wreck any local church.
So when you got to church, you was already fired up. Yeah. Am I telling the truth about right there? Yeah. Then you sang in your worship. You didn't know a thing about Toda and Yada and Tahila. You didn't know any of that. Allah, you didn't know any of that. But, but, but you worship on your way to church. You worship after you got to church. The, 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 the service was dismissed. And they're trying to get you out of here and you're still worshiping after church. And if that wasn't bad, good enough, long enough, sufficient enough, you were worshiping on your way home from church. You remember when you used to worship for your own? the word 
Talk about what? 
Thessalonians, there is a negative side of that us. And the negative side is this. I don't, if you will, let us, let us not sleep. Wide awake. 